Hi, this is Nell, illustrator slash animator slash generic creative, and now <sighs> frustrated to no end. Everything started in January 2020. My mother's birthday was coming next month, so it occurred to me I could create some custom jewelry tailored for her. At some point in 2014, look at the cat depicted here interrupting my previous project, and Rumi, my mother's cat, met each other fell in lust, and had four beautiful kittens which live at my parents and are my mom's adoration. So I decided to design a piece of jewelry that included all the kittens to give her for her birthday. I had previously visited the Swarovski Museum in Austria, and after a shiny experience I bought a box of assorted crystals, so I picked some of the previous ones, turned on my computer, spent some time sketching, then some time 3D modeling, and then asked around for a place that could help me 3D print to set. I contacted several 3D printing service places, but only one got back to me with a quote. They will charge me the equivalent of $167 just for printing the prototype in resin, and the printing service executive told me there was a high chance that, say, prototype will fail once casted, so I should keep in mind the possibility of printing it out more than once. Out of curiosity, I googled how much a resin printing costed, and I bumped into the Elegu Mars, which at the time cost $300, which was less money than printing the prototype twice, so I thought, what if I buy it and do the printing myself? Unfortunately, the Elego Mars was out of stock, so I couldn't buy it right away. Then COVID happened, China closed their exports, and being Elego, a Chinese company, it was practically impossible to get anything from them. Then COVID spread worldwide, and it became very hard to get anything from anywhere. My mom's birthday came and went, and I gifted her something else, pausing the project for Mother's Day. Unfortunately, COVID stuck around, so there was no advance on that regard either, but precisely on May, Elegu announced their new model, the Elegu Saturn, with a larger printing capacity and more improvements priced at $500, so I decided to get that one instead. Fast forward to September, my Elegu finally arrived and I toyed around with it before printing my first jewelry prototype, now intended for a Christmas gift. For jewelry casting, you do need a special type of material, so my options were to buy jewelry casting resin or to print the prototype in regular resin and contact a jeweler for them to make a mold of it and then make the proper wax prototype. I chose the later option, brought my 3D print to the jewelry center of my city and asked for quotes in the workshops I found. The first workshop quote me $300 for casting the set in sterling silver with some parts coated in 14 karat gold, plus another $100 for casting a ring I designed for my dad. They told me my design had very intricate parts that would get lost if I made a mold out of it, so the only viable option was to print my model with a special resin and then come back. If I bought the prototype in castable resin the next day, they might make it in time for Christmas. I came to the second workshop and they quoted me $200 for casting both the set and the ring, and then this exchange happened. Um, I think this resin will work, actually. Really? This is, this is not castable resin, it is regular 3D printing resin. Um, okay, let me ask. Yep, this will work. Are you sure? Because in the other workshop they told me it was not going to work, and they said I needed to print it again with a cast of resin. Actually, they specifically mentioned these tiny flowers will cause trouble. Um, let me ask again. Yup, no problem. We can work with this without issue. Well, awesome. Then, when will I be ready? Next Thursday. Great. That was in six days, one week before Christmas. It was a no-brainer for me. I noticed the first workshop I attended was run by a man in his 50s, maybe 60s, and this new workshop had only staff in their 20s, so I thought that maybe that had to do. Maybe the young workshop was more updated in what it can be done and the old workshop was just set in their ways. I mean, it is not uncommon in the advertising and design industry for agencies and design veterans to charge like a wounded wolf, and it is the talented intern fresh out of college the one that actually does the work and gets paid in peanuts, so 
Maybe these talented interns, as it often happens, realize they will do better going solo, put their own workshop and decide to charge what they deem fair. Boy, was I oh so wrong. I paid half the money to the second workshop and sent imagery of how I wanted for it to look like. Everything got settled, or so I thought. Then, one day before the piece was supposed to be ready, this happened. Good afternoon. I just got told in the casting workshop that the type of resin you used for your prototype might not work. Do you want to go ahead even with that risk? That's what I told you. Uh, I told you that this resin was not castable and we needed to make a mold, but you said it would work anyway. If you have the 3D file, we can print it with castable resin, but it would cost extra. How much? Um, when will it be done? I need the set for September 19. Would that be possible? Yep, no problem with the time. The resin is the problem. I'll tell you the extra cost tomorrow, but I guess it would be around $100. It was still about the same price that the first workshop had quote just for the first set, and I will have to print it in the castle resin anyway, so I decided to go ahead. They decided to cast the regular resin still, just in case it might work, but of course it didn't. When the jeweler contacted me the next day, he raised the price to $150, which, if you noticed, sent us back to square one, the same place we were initially in January 2020. I told him I only had a budget of $300 and they agreed to adapt to it. Then, two days later, and two before the date I told them I needed this set made, this happened. Hi, the girls at the printing center told me they need the SDL file without support. Could you modify it? Yes, I can. I will send it right away. Please, so they can print it today because we are running out of time. File sent. Great. Anything else I'll let you know. Hi, how's it going? Hi, I already printed some things. Tomorrow they will give me the rest. Will it be ready tomorrow? When is your deadline? Tomorrow. I am off for Christmas at 20. I would need to send it to you. Where are you going? I would send it to you on Tuesday so you receive it on webs. That's far after Christmas. You told me it will be past Thursday. You told me my 3D print will work. I asked twice before hiring you and each time something else comes up. Yeah, that was the problem. That the resin didn't work. That's why we didn't meet the deadline. But the solution I can offer you is to send it to you wherever you are. Not sure if it works for you. The problem is that there are many things popping up one of them over. I asked twice if you could really work with the resin and you say yes. And it happened it was not true. You requested the file, then for the file to be modified, and said it will be ready at 19 and that also was not met. Now you are telling me you are going to send it, but how do I know this is not going to be yet another unmet promise? I understand. I calculated the time hoping everything would work at the first try, assuming the resin would work. And indeed you asked, but I don't know if you noticed. I was very busy and I did not take a proper look at the resin. We had to modify the file because otherwise the cost would be higher. I want for this project to be completed and for you to be happy with it. But if you no longer need the set, we can give you your money back. Although I would like to continue because we already invested time and printing. But I am in your hands. Whatever you decide. Well, you tell me. Are you absolutely sure it is going to be done by then? I prefer you to be honest because I don't want for you to rush it and do a bad work. So let me know how much time it will truly take you to make it properly. Honestly, yes. We are very pressured for everything that is yet to get done. Probably it would take even longer. I would say a week from now. Okay, let's do this. You're working it at your own pace, making the most beautiful piece you have made in your entire career. And I will come pick it up in January. After this exchange, he sent me an audio message with a beautiful schedule on how he was planning to organize the following week. And while I had several reasons to be mad at this, I realized I still had time to get Christmas presents for my parents, so I bought them books and decided this piece will end up being a birthday present as originally intended. So I came to visit my parents, spent some days with them, and finally came back in January to pick the piece. Hi, how's it going? Is the set ready? Hi, I've got the prints ready. And the set? I will send you pics tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, 
tape, I already got these prints, but the printer is failing and the technician can't fix what's wrong with it, which had delayed the printing of the remaining pieces by a lot, but I hope to have it sorted tomorrow. My mother's birthday was until February, so I had time, which prevented me from getting mad at yet another letdown. At this point, I began to consider getting the castable resin myself, so I started researching. The first thing I noticed was that the castable resin for jewelry costs up to six times more than regular resin and twice as much of the original price in my country, which makes a liter of resin even more expensive than the 3D printer itself. Hi, let me ask in the 3D printing place. <laughs> to think it was meant to be done in four days. Yeah, the problem is that the printer marks error and does not print anymore, so they bought a new one and is yet to arrive, which has us halted not only with your work but with several others. We are very pressured because of that. If you don't want to continue, we can give your money back. But if you do, just keep in mind we have to wait for the printer to arrive. It will be here in approximately two weeks. I can meanwhile work the pieces that are already printed, but I would need for you to approve on that. The issue here is that I don't know if this is a case of incredible bad luck or if they are just excuses, you know. If it is bad luck, I'll say let's continue, but since I don't really know, just say it is going to take two weeks. But I guess I mean, this is not for sure and we will keep delaying things until the next forever, so I'm going to do this. I will buy customer resin myself. If it arrives before the printer, I will contact you, either to come back to the initial deal of $200 or to ask for my money back. He didn't answer to this, but I was so fed up at this point that I saw screw it. I will buy a casserole resin from abroad and do the things myself like I always because <sighs> hashtag people. Since COVID was still a thing, a proper castable resin was not easy to find. Amazon didn't have many options, many of them from unheard of brands with no reviews or two to three star reviews. So after surfing Reddit for a while, I ended up in the Power Resins website. I ended up buying the Zero Shrinkage one at, ouch, $300, but I rationalized expense thinking I could print many sets with it and avoid the proverbial bump in the project that has been present since day one. So let the race begin. May the odds be with you. And odds, like the track record of this jeweler might suggest, did favor the resins. After seven days, the resins I have bought from Power Resins arrived and everybody lived happily ever after. Of course that didn't happen. I received a call one morning. It was a lady who informed me my resin had arrived, but wanted to know if I had a custom broken license. I said that no, I didn't, and then she proceeded to tell me I needed one, otherwise they could not deliver the resin, so my options were 1. Hire a custom broker. 2. Pay them to return the resin to sender. Or 3. Drop the resin for good, which means I should state I did not want to receive the package anymore, so I will end up confiscated at customs and destroyed. It made no sense. I could explain that, since my resin was an article of difficult classification, it could not be let in inside the country like regular goods and yeah, those were my options. I said the package contained a 3D printing resin and I had the tariff code so it was perfectly identifiable, but I got told that it didn't matter, it was a liquid so they could not trust just any statement of what it was. I found that fishy so I said it will do research about it and call them back. I did, and indeed I did not find a law on the custom page of my country that backed what they were saying. It was not a forbidden item, it was not over $1,000, nor in large quantities to commercialize, which are the situations that required a custom broker, according to the law. So I called them to clarify this, then I got explains that, back in the day, drugs were smuggled inside milk cartoons, and since then, they, as a carrier company, do not want to deal with any liquid or powder without being able to transfer the blame to someone else, just in case they ended up being illegal substances, reason why they required a customs broker to sign for the shipment. 
I started weighing my options. I researched what I needed to get a custom broker permit myself, and I contacted several custom brokers asking for a quote, because I was not going to give them a $300 receipt, nor pay them $50 to return it to sender. The lowest fee I could get from custom brokers was near $700, and the process I needed to get the license myself would take from 10 days up to 3 months, depending on availability, and these were normal times suspected to be extended because of COVID. I must mention that customs will keep the resin in their warehouse for just 3 days, and after this, it will start generating storage fee, which could be between 2 up to eight dollars a day so yeah my options were one get screwed hard now two get a screw slow and steady during three months three give the state a three hundred dollar resin or four lose fifty dollars in sending it back while i figured out what flavor of getting a screw i preferred i texted the jeweler to see if he at least had advanced his hand Hi, I already have the castable resin prints, and others in regular resin. I will start casting these meanwhile they print the rest. Okay, you let me know. Sure. As we can witness, things didn't move since the last time we spoke 8 days before. Back to the resin issue, I figured that if I sent it back to Power Resins and they sent it again, it would spend 20 days in transit on which I could start the process to get a customs license, and cross fingers, I could get it approved on time. Maybe ask Book of Resins to hold it for me until I had it. So I wrote to Power Resin's sales team to explain the situation, and the same issues I was facing with customs my end, they will face themselves their answer no they wouldn't be able to do it. After some back and forth, they advised me to lose the resin, get the customs permit, and once I had it, they will send me a sample bottle of resin to compensate for the hassle. I agreed to this and started my permit application. Since I was not going to have any castable resin on my hands soon, I had no choice but to come back to the jeweler. I will get the ring delivered to me on Monday, which was the remaining piece. Okay, I will get in touch on Thursday to see how to go. Okay. How's it going? I'll send you a pic. Oh, when will it be ready? With everything that is left, to be sure, next webs. I left him to work that week. Meanwhile, between the people who contacted me with custom broken fee quotes, someone with a different profile wrote me. They had a warehouse in El Paso, Texas, and if I sent the resin there, they could cross it to Mexico for a fee. I checked their Facebook profile. They seemed trustworthy, so I sent them a message. They will do it for $110. I contacted DHL and asked to resend the resin to this warehouse, which was quite a complicated thing to do. I had the phone call like four different departments inside DHL, but it worked out at the end. At the end I paid $165 on top of the $300 that the resin costed. Now it was time to wait. Meanwhile I checked with the jeweler to see what he had done. Hi, how's it going? Hi, some pieces are yet to cast. I will cast and finish tomorrow to coat it in gold on Thursday. Please send me a message to confirm. I have everything casted. I just need to finish. When shall I come? I hope to give you the set on Saturday. Okay. Hi, a bit delayed. Go figure. Ha ha ha. But I'm trying my best. Do you think it will be ready for the weekend? They will let me know about the coating tomorrow. I will let you know at noon. Okay, so Monday or Tuesday? Yes, please. Hi, good night. I went out for vacation and I do not currently have the status of your stuff. Give me some time. I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> to compensate the utter cynicism of a jeweler that seemed to guess I had been left stuck with him with no options, the resin arrived the next day. I still texted him to see what the status was. When can I come pick up my set? Hi, they are finishing it. For when? It will be ready on Wednesday. This for sure? Yes. I am printing another prototype and I am taking it with me on Wednesday. If 
my set is not ready by then, I will have to ask you for a refund. If the set is ready by then, then there is no problem. Absolutely no problem with that. Hi, will the set be ready tomorrow? So I know if I should print the prototype or not. Hi, they are coating the cats now. I still need to work on the ring and I just arrived to the city today from my vacations. Honestly, it wouldn't be finished today. Okay, I will go tomorrow to get my dumb payment back. Well, no luck. If you come tomorrow, I would be able to deliver the set already. Hey, hey, it's cute. Okay, I'll come pick them up then. So I came to pick it up. After a somewhat awkward interaction where they told me they were there for any other projects I needed, <laughs> I went home to finally close that chapter. It took a lot of time and frustration, but the end result was be. Wait a minute. This one was on me, for not inspecting the piece on site and demanding a discount or something because I was so not going to ask him to fix it and wait for another thousand years. I told you could just take off the extra rows and pretend the missing parts were never there, but something felt bad about it. I still had time before my mom's birthday, so I thought, what if I tried to make this piece again? I mean, I got an uber expensive liter of resin available, so... Yeah, I decided to do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not have more of the Swarovski stones I used originally, so I searched for more on the internet. I found an American reseller website and placed an order for the closest looking stones I could find, just changing them from pink to green because my mother happens to be the autumn and green suit her better than pinks. Thing I didn't take into account before because I lead it with the Swarovski stones I already had. So, I bought the crystal stones with a bunch of other things I liked and placed my order. Now, the next step was to find new people to work with. One of the things I noticed was that my jeweler guy was not doing much of the work himself. He was instead getting third parties to do many of the processes. He had 3D printing people, and I am 3D printing people, so that was cover. I only needed to find metal casting people and gold coating people, so I started researching for places that could do that for me. The first place I found was the coating one, so I requested a quote for the piece. The price will depend on how many grams of metal you will need on the coating and how large the volume, but it was not insanely expensive. I asked them if they knew casting workshops they could recommend, and they recommended two jewelers. I called them both for quotes and decided on one. I just needed for the Swarovski stones to arrive to see if I had to make a change to the 3D model before printing the prototype, given I could not find the exact model of the stones I previously used. But that will happen soon, since the Swarovski reseller states their shipment will take 4 days, maybe up to 10 before Covid delays. Spoiler, it took 3 months and a half. The package got stuck in customs. After first month, I mailed the store and they say it was normal due to COVID, since they used USPS and this means the national postal system is taking care of everything and the postal service of my country has the superpower of delaying packages up to 5 months, being 2 months usually the standard time. <laughs> I assumed this was normal and I should just be patient, which I found also fair because I got charged $16 for shipping. Two months passed and I contacted both the store and USPS again, and I was informed that the tracking period of my shipment had expired, so no one was responsible for it now. After showing a ton trim, the American Swarovski retailer ordered a fresh ship. At this point, I decided to just order the crystals from China. I discovered by an unrelated delivery that many AliExpress stores stopped partnering with the National Postal Service precisely because of their less than optimal performance and have alternate partners now, which are being surprisingly efficient considering the deliveries come from so far away. I found a listing of crystals that looked almost the same than the Sorovskis that I bought from USA, so I got them and then some, given they were 10 times cheaper. The Chinese crystals took one month to arrive, and they still arrive earlier than the American ones. 
the new shipment from America seemed to be again stuck on customs, so the retailer had to organize a third reship. Out of frustration, I bought a new crystals from China, but this time they were actual silicons, more expensive than regular crystals but supposedly better quality. When the Swarovski crystals from America finally arrived, I noticed something. They were virtually no different than the Chinese crystals. I don't know if Swarovski manufactures in China or if the American retailer is full of it. All I know is that I have virtually the same crystal at two different price points. I finally had everything to get myself to work, so I printed my prototype, not without complication, I must add. Review your files don't have issues with batch mixer, guys. And once done, I bought it to my new jeweler, plus the Death Stranding earrings prototypes from the previous video. He casted my piece in copper for $10 and had it done in around 3 weeks. Was probably less than that, given I also produced the Death Stranding earrings for the past video and took a weekend off to go to the Caribbean. Zero Hassle this time, the very opposite, this jeweler who was very experienced and even made suggestions on how to do certain things better and told me useful info like how circuits and precious stones are able to endure direct casting but crystals have to get glued to the pieces because they can't. Even when I ended up using the circuits that I last bought from China instead of the Swarovskis, I ended up gluing them anyway because my design had rookie mistakes, like not really thinking how the piece will support the stones by itself, but my jeweler did a great job attempting to do that anyway, and recommended me to wait and glue the stones after the coating process was made, otherwise it would look bad. After he was done, I brought the piece to my coating person, who charged me $15 for 22 grams of 24 karat gold, which was the highest density they offered in the store. Once he was done, I bought jugular glue, put the stones together, got the pretty case, and this was the result. So yeah, after several mistakes, I learned a lot with this project. My main takes are Common wisdom seems to hold, the cheaper it looks, the more expensive it tends to be. Most of the money goes to the middlemen, so cut them off as much as you can. There is virtually no difference between Crystal from China and Swarovski. Kovic Sirkin beats Swarovski. So yeah, hope this video was useful to you, and if you happen to also be into 3D printing jewelry and have tips and tricks to share, pieces you made you want to show, or any feedback you want to share whatsoever, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day!